Good afternoon to all our listeners, especially our teachers teaching EVS Class 3. Once again, on behalf of entire EVS team, we welcome you all on this fourth session of orientation program on the newly developed EVS textbook of Class 3 developed by SCERT and Education Department of Scheme. As you know, first 40 minutes we'll be discussing about today's theme. If you have any queries, then you can call us after 12.40 on the All India Radio Gang Talk studio number. The number is 03592-201171. I repeat, 03592-201171. Before going to our today's talk on theme 3, let's try to recall what we have done in the last three sessions of radio talk. The first session was on brief journey of writing of EBS textbook and what are the various components which are there in our EBS textbook of class 3 by Chiring Wong the Bhutia and myself Dikila Lecha. Second session was on the first theme as we have already shared with you all that EVS in EVS textbook we have built up our, our chapters around a theme. Okay, so we have four themes. So from second session we started orienting you about theme. And on that second theme, which was on family and friends, was taken by Bhavana Gurung and Sandhya Thapa. <clears throat> the third session, which was last week only, which uh, was done by Chiring Wongdi Bhutia on our second theme, that is food and water. So today we are here to talk and discuss about the third theme, clothing and shelter. Uh, I am Dikila Lepcha from SCRT and with me my dear sister Sonu Thapa from Inche Senior Secondary School. So all together there are three chapters under this theme. Chapter 7, <clears throat> where we live. Chapter 8, a roof over my head and chapter number nine what we wear so these are the three chapters under this third three theme called clothing and shelter the reason for selecting this theme as one of the four themes of our EVS textbook is because this is one of the basic needs for any living beings to survive also we would like to remind you once again that the themes chosen are strongly influenced by the educational goals and socio-cultural, linguistic, political and geographical context of Sikkim. It has chosen while keeping in mind the children of Sikkim, their day-to-day -day experiences exposure to the surrounding they lived in, the kinds of questions they have, their interest and the activities they are engaged every day. So all these chapters have been devised keeping in mind the child at the center. How our Sikkimese child learns, what are the different values and skills need to be developed by them from early stage itself. So these are something which are very, very important, which determines for writing our chapters. Thank you. And rightly said. We would like to request the teachers teaching this new textbook that you should go through the entire book, taking time to read and understand the book and own it. There are many elements in the textbook, such as 
teacher's page and teacher's note which are there and is one of the most important aspect in this new textbook these are there to help and guide you to be better prepared and equipped in transacting the lesson in the class in a meaningful way they are there as a reference guide for you all okay so today we are going to take each individual chapter from chapter 7 till chapter 9 and we will be talking about the objectives and evia skills we have also made an attempt to address certain learning outcomes or elos as well as the ests which are embedded in each individual chapters with the hope that this effort of ours will make transacting the lesson smoothly in the class for you now i would like to request our teachers if you could kindly refer to the evs textbook of class 3 either a soft copy or a or a hard copy when we will be taking you through the concerned chapters i hope our teachers are ready with the textbook now so let's begin the first chapter in the theme is where we live so this is the first chapter of this theme <clears throat> so let's try to understand the objectives of this chapter okay so first one is to observe different ways houses are made and materials has been used to make those houses built houses second one is to appreciate traditional forms of buildings in sikkim and how the environment and availability of materials have influenced this the third objective of the chapter is to recognize buildings which are used for public or community use the chapter begins with a narrative wherein we meet children some children are from sikkim like pemket rosa sonam pemba monika and paldin we have other children also like manohar from rajasthan and tutumoni from assam each child talks about their houses which can be either in urban or in rural area the narrative has been accompanied by pictures sketches which will help the child to visualize the houses types of houses there has been a conscious effort to reflect the multicultural dimensions of diversity this has been done to ensure and bring forward the concept of diversity in our state as well as in our country as a whole in this narrative the child the children also talk about the different types of materials used to construct their houses examples have been given of bamboo mud chitra ikra stone wood and bricks exactly i in this chapter we have talked about the different types of houses not only in terms of materials used but also in the structure of the houses the examples of the houses have been done after looking at the different structures in which a child can live for example a wooden house a mud house or a building 
This has been done to ensure that the child learns to observe the different types of home. There are different kinds of houses in Sikkim and our chapter tends to cater to all. An attempt has been made on localization of the content. For instance, the narrative of Pemkit talks about sloped roofs which are a very common feature in our Sikkimist culture given our state's weather condition. We have example of Tutimoni's house which is built on bamboo stills above the ground which keeps them safe during rainy seasons. Here I would like to mention as has been mentioned in the first session that before writing all these chapters the authors have done research work such as field visits to get the required information. During one of our field visit we came to know of a traditional architecture of earlier houses which were built without using a single nail. Well, that was something very interesting and a new piece of information for us also. Sadly, we hardly get to see this nowadays. This has made us understand and appreciate the traditional knowledge of building houses and we felt a need to preserve it for our future generation, thus helping them in the embedding of ESD. Very true, Sonu, because it is very important for us to preserve our tradition. Now moving on, assessment and activities of the chapter. Assessment and activities are the most integral part of any teaching learning process because it determines whether learning is taking place or not. It helps whether the child has been able to achieve the learning outcomes which has been stated beforehand. Thus helping the child to develop all aspects of his or her, making a child a holistic or all realm development. Uh, hence, we cannot take these in isolation. So keeping this in our mind, <clears throat> there are many inbuilt assessment in this chapter, which will help the teacher to assess the child's learning in a continuous and comprehensive way. The questions and tasks which are there try to encourage the child to explore their surrounding and gather the required information. Conscious effort has been taken while writing the content as well as developing various assessment activities. All the assessment has been devised keeping the EVS skills such as observation, exploration, categorization, drawing and so on. For instance, questions such as why are these houses built over the ground which is given in page number 93. And also, there is another question in page number 95. Why is the Chitra house not strong like a brick house? It will help in fostering skills like discussion, expressing their views, as well as analyzing the content. <coughs> Excuse me. As you all know, 
our textbook is aligned with learning outcomes and ESD. So here now I will like to highlight some of the learning outcomes addressed by this chapter. For example, in page number 988, if you could see that PEM kit, it talks about, there is a description of a PEM kit, narrative about the PEM kit. See, when she was saying that during her vacation, summer vacation, she goes to Manul to stay with her Thikung and Nyukung, means grandparents. And in page number 94, Manohar goes to visit his nani in Rajasthan, which helps the child to identify relationships with and among family members. The whole chapter is covered with types of houses as well as it takes different places of, it talks different places of shelters such as schools, neighborhood and so on which help the child to identify different places. So this is addressing learning objective sorry, learning outcomes for. <coughs> Another learning outcomes, right, well, we have tried to incorporate in this chapter is chap learning outcome 11, where the children experiences of visiting different places in their vacation, sharing their observation of different houses, their shapes, colors, materials, paintings on the wall, etc. Uh, we have, I would like to share one more learning outcomes like uh, showing sensitivity towards animals. In one of the narrations, a Rosa, a child from Gangtok, who considered his dog as a part of family. So why we have given such activities, such narration, such illustration in our textbook is through this child can achieve the learning outcomes. But please remember that you will not get all learning outcomes in one chapter but it has been addressed across the chapters of class 3 EVS textbook. Again, this is very important to know that learning outcomes ranges at different levels. It started with very simple and once and slowly and slowly it <coughs> there is a complexity we can see in our learning outcomes also. And uh, learning outcomes, ranges of learning outcomes, it actually promotes thinking of a child and totally discourage the rote learning. Well, moving forward <coughs> now, let's talk about the ESTs embedded <coughs> in this chapter. Here, I would like to cite some examples. The whole chapter talks about different types of houses built with different types of materials on the basis of their availability and the climatic condition. This helps the child to critically analyze the reason why there are different types of houses in different places, thus reflecting the competencies of thinking critically. In page number 91, there is a mention of Sangbhum, which we find in almost every Sikkimese Buddhist houses. And in the same page, a teacher's note has been provided with 
which mentions chula, tulsi mat, and other such ceremonial items. This was consciously added, keeping the diverse culture in mind, hence reflecting the ESD competencies of thinking and acting inclusively. Now, this comes to the end of the first chapter of the theme. Now, move, let's move towards the second chapter. The second chapter focuses on home. And the name of the chapter is A Roof Over My Head. <coughs> home, as we all know, is a place where we all live. With this notion in mind, we have tried to incorporate this concept through the chapter and provide an opportunity for the child to explore and understand this concept. This chapter begins with narrative of Siddharth and Doripsen, where they talk about their homes. Siddhartha lived in a rented building, whereas Dorizem lives in her own, own home. The focus here was to bring out the concept of home or shelter of different types, which can be a hut, own house, a rented place, or any kind of shelter. Here in this chapter, we have also tried to bring in the concept of people moving from one place to another, which is known as migration. The chapter has a short narrative of Kunzang, narrative of Kunzang, through which we have tried to bring in the concept of seasonal migration. We have tried to localize the content by giving example of people who are living in Lachin, moves to Thangu during summer time along with their animals and back to Lachin during winter. This information has been gathered by our textbook writer through telephonic conversation with one of the resident of Lachin. As there can be many reasons for migration, a teacher's note has been provided in the same page to talk about those reasons for migration. <clears throat> yes, very true, I. In the chapter, we have also tried to talk about excuse me in the chapter we have also tried <laughs> okay so, so do so what we have done is in this chapter we have also tried to talk about natural calamities such as landslide which is very predominant phenomena in Sikkim. Um, we have talked about this as this results in people moving from one place to another in search of shelter. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Here, we have also tried to bring in the concept of homelessness in the chapter. This concept of homelessness has been introduced to make a child aware of why home is one of our basic requirement. This will also make the child sensitize with those who are living without a proper shelter. While writing about this concept of homelessness, we faced a lot of, uh, we faced a lot of challenges. One of the challenge was to make a child of this age to understand the concept of homelessness. As a child in our state 
has till now not been introduced to this concept. To address to this problem, we have used newspaper clippings and some real photographs of Mantam village of North Sikkim which was affected by a massive landslide. And based on those pictures, we have asked them certain questions. The idea here is to only make a child understand and feel how a person becomes homeless due to various reasons and uh, due to various reasons. Here we have also emphasized on the role of Samaj by bringing Samaj and by showing how the Samaj helps in rebuilding the home again. Shruta Bargalai Ma Bhim Thatal, Director of Primary Education and Samagra Shiksha Director Kutara Bata Namaskar. SCRT and Samagra Shiksha Dwara Tayar Pariye Ku Primary School Ko Lagi Jun Textbook Sa Tiyo Tayar Bhaar Aai Sakye Ko Chha. Tara Yoh Naya Textbook Lai Padao Na Ka Lagi Shikshak Shikshe Ka Harile Prashikshan Linu Ani Vaadiya Chha. Aile Lockdown Ko Samaya Ma Kune Ek Thao Bhelaya Bhaar Ra Training Dina Sambab Na Bhaaye Ko Lai Gar Da Kheri Hami Le Yoh Training Akash Bani Ko Gantok Kendra Marfat Prasarit Gari Raya Ka Chha. प्रत्येक सोमबार बुधवार अनि शुक्रबार दिउँसो 12 बजे देखि यो ट्रेनिंग कार्यक्रम आकाशवाणी गान्तोक बाट प्रसारण गरिने छ यस कार्यक्रमलाई अस्ति चाहिँ हामीले प्राइमरी टिचरहरुको लागि मात्र राखेका थियौ तर अब यो कार्यक्रम हामीले प्राइमरी टिचरलाई मात्र नभएर चाहिँ सबै स्कुलका हेडमास्टरहरुलाई ब्लक रिसोर्स सेन्टर कोअर्डिनेटर क्लस्टर रिसोर्स सेन्टर कोअर्डिनेटर असिस्टेन्ट एजुकेशन अफिसर असिस्टेन्ट डाइरेक्टर डेप्युटी डाइरेक्टर सबैले यो ट्रेनिङ गर्न अनिवार्य रहेको छ त्यसर्थ यहाँहरुलाई यो ट्रेनिङ अनिवार्य रूपमा गरिदिनु हुन हामी निवेदन गर्दछौ स्मरण रहोस् यस विषयमा अब अन्य कुनै ट्रेनिङ गरिने छैन त्यसर्थ रेडियो मार्फतै यो जुन ट्रेनिङको प्रसारण भइरहेको छ यसैलाई नै तपाईहरुले सुन्नु हुन हामी निवेदन गर्दछौ वेलकम यू ऑल आफ्टर अ शॉर्ट ब्रेक सो this is what a chapter talks about, the importance of chapter, why uh, the concept of homelessness has been brought in this chapter, and what is the seasonal migrations, which is also there in some part of our state, Sikkim. So now, <clears throat> uh, again, uh, as we have shared, uh, that we made very conscious effort while developing various assessment activities. We wanted that our textbook to be more interactive where child can engage himself or herself thus can create his or her own knowledge opportunities through assessment has been provided to the child where they can vocalized and build upon their curiosity for example idea about home and its need may vary from child to child. Therefore, while doing the activities such as mind map in page number 104, which tries to bring the concept of the need for shelter or home, responses of the child may differ from another child. The idea of this activity, hence the idea of this activity is to inculcate and to develop the skills of areas such as observation and reporting, discussion, expression and cooperation. Likewise, assessments such as tables which needs to be completed in, given in page number 106, sketches to be drawn in page number 107 as well as the picture composition followed by questions in pages num page number 108 and 109 have been designed to provide the child ample opportunity to foster various skills. Now, focusing on the learning outcome of this chapter, there are illustrations that have been given throughout the chapter 
which aligns with LO4. At this stage, we have introduced directions of place in a very simple way, like up, high, down, instead of cardinal direction. This will help the child to identify location, thus aligning with LO9. There are examples which tends to bring out opinion on stereotyping in a family. For instance, a picture has been given where a man is shown as cooking food and a woman is shown as reading a newspaper. There are some examples as in page number 109 which brings out sensitivity towards animal hence catering to one of the yellows. The whole section in page 110-111 tries to make the child sensitive towards other people's basic needs in terms of food and shelter and also tries to make an attempt to sensitize the child. Apart from these there are other examples throughout the chapter which are aligned with other LOs. Uh, I, we hope that our teachers are fo uh, following us because what we are doing right now is we are taking each chapter, we are starting with giving the brief uh, introduction objectives, then which are the some LOs we uh, as we are being saying that there are many LOs has been addressed by this chapter, certain chapter, but we are not uh, discussing all the LOs or learning outcomes and uh, how, what, how that skills has been developed through different activities, inbuilt activities, with the help of pictures, sometimes with the help of some questions. Okay, so let's now see how ESD has been embedded in this chapter. Uh, there is an activity in page number 105 where two pictures have been given and the child has been asked to add or draw basic facilities which would make the space ideal to live in. The idea is to enable the child to think critically, hence helping the child to meet one of the ESD competency. Uh, questions such as how would you feel if your house was damaged due to some natural calamities? So such kind of questions focuses on enhancing the ability to reflect on other situation and feel empathy for them. Again, the role of Samaj in remaking the house addresses the ESD of showing solidarity and responsibility which you can see in page number 111. With this we come to the end of the second chapter. Now we shall be starting with the third chapter. The third chapter is titled What We Wear. Here we have focused on the concept of cloth as a shelter for our body. This chapter tries to create spaces wherein the child learns about the different types of fabrics and appreciates them too. Once again here we have made an attempt to localize the content and reflect the multicultural dimension of a diverse classroom by giving equal importance to every child's community and culture. In our community, there are instances where people wear different types of clothes, each reflecting their own tradition and culture. The chapter makes an attempt for the child to learn and understand about these as well as focus on the different types of fabrics used. In this chapter, we have brought the concept of weavers also. This will help the child to appreciate and respect the traditional knowledge of 
handloom, weavers, and artisans, such as tailors, who work hard and earn money for their livelihood. Very true, Sonu, because they are the one who are working very hard and equally they are struggling to earn their livelihood also. Okay, so here in this chapter, we have talked about a Rari Viva Arjun who belongs to one of the community in our state. Rari weavers are those who make clothes out of sheep wool. <coughs> the traditional knowledge of weaving clothes from sheep wool is now on getting lost slowly. So we thought that it was very important to incorporate these kind of issues in our lesson. <clears throat> in the chapter, there is also a section on Basanti, who happens to be from Bihar, but has settled in Sikkim after marriage and does stitching cloths to help her family. Through this chapter, we also wanted to focus on skills of stitching and weaving. <clears throat> the chapter begins with a picture wherein the child finds out about the different types of uniform worn by the students. Here in the chapter, we have also talked about uniform which apart from student, school students, others also wear, such as doctors, nurses, policemen, lawyer, and so on. The concept of stitched and unstitched cloths has also been brought in the lesson. Through Basanti's story, and making warm clothes, we try to highlight the problem faced by artisans such as tailor and weaver. The concept of reusing old clothes has also been addressed in the chapter. For this chapter, both the artisans has been interviewed by the writers and after collecting the required information, the content has been built. Talking about assessment in this chapter, they are varied in nature, such as picture composition on page number 112, matching sketches to certain object on page number 114. As learning should not be confined within the four walls of the school, an activity of a field visit to a tailor's shop has also been included. This was done to ensure that the child gets the first-hand knowledge of how a tailor's shop looks like and what are the various things with which a tailor stitches or makes a cloth. Hands-on experiences with a simple experiment to see the observant quality of the cloth will help them to understand how various types of cloths absorb water and which one dries fast. All such knowledge-based and application-based questions and activities will ensure the holistic development of the child. Throughout the chapter, various examples and probing questions have been asked, which will ensure that the child questions and thinks about the issue which it addresses to. Now I would like to give you examples how ESD has been incorporated in this chapter. The short story on Basanti Bhabi gives the students a scope to reflect on her situation and feel empathy for her. There are possibilities for <clears throat> critically reflection upon diverse perspectives and seeing things differently. The other small content on reusing old clothes and sharing and caring also provides students ample space to reflect on other situations and feel empathy for them. Thus, helping the child to embed the ESD elements of changing perspective. The section on reusing all clothes and making warm clothes cater the situation, students' ability to link 
innovations, development modernizations with sustainable development goals in order to assess actions and decisions to take with changes. The activities on measuring of friends, shoulders and slips and sharing and caring provides a platform for the students to participate and collaborate with each other for effective teaching learning experiences. Rightly said I. Now coming back to the LOs. The chapter reflects a range of LOs to promote thinking in a child and to discourage rote learning. A fun activity has been given where the child has to take the measurement of their friend with a hand and note down the detail. Also, a section on tags have been given which will help the child to see at the different types of materials used to make cloth, thus helping the child to guess properties as well as use a non-standard unit, for example, a hand span, in the daily lives. This reflects LO 10. A simple experiment is suggested as an assessment, which will help the child to observe, to, uh, to observe the absorbent property of different cloth. The story of Basanti, a woman as a tailor, tends to break the notion that only males can be a tailor. So with this, we come to the end of this theme three, clothing and shelter. We hope our teacher must have got some idea about the chapter under this theme, three different chapters. Once again, we would like to request our teachers to kindly go through the book from the beginning till the end. We have used six different icons with specific aim, which you will find in each inbuilt activities. This is one. This is done to develop the required EVS skills. Content as well as activities were developed while taking LOs and ESD in mind. Also, an attempt has been made to incorporate local flavors where child feels comfortable to learn and grow. In other words, our theme chapters are designed keeping child in the centers. So one more information I would like to share with you all. Uh, since uh, next week would be the last uh, session for this orientation program through radio and if you have any difficulties, if you find any difficulties in future, please feel free to call us in helpline line number which is creating by SCRT. So regarding this helpline number, next week Director SCRT Sri Robin Chetri will be addressing you all. So today uh, we have completed this third theme. Uh, the name of the theme is clothing and shelter. Thank you.